Right now we are going to understand how to use the forecast function in Excel. As you would see Excel has several forecast functions here and uh, we will try to understand uh, as much as possible how to exploit or utilize this for our best. And I also talked about the difference between what is forecast and what is uh, prediction in one of my other videos. Uh, if you want to check that out, uh, please feel free to do so in my channel. Now coming back here, let's talk about uh, the data that we have on hand. We have uh, data for 10 months and we have data of customer acquisition. So we have new customer acquisition for 10 months and this is the month number starting with 1 for January and uh, 10 for October. Our objective here is to predict what would be for example the uh, new customer acquisition for November or for example what would be the to total customer base. So we'll come to this one by one. Let's understand what the other two columns here are. Uh, column E talks about the existing base. So we have an opening balance of uh, 222 customers and uh, in the month of January we added uh, 121. So uh, that would result in 343 customers as our total base and uh, so on and so forth. So this is the customers added for the month. This is the carryover from the previous month and this is the total base of customers. And uh, looks like this is a startup so obviously their customer base is steadily increasing and we wish to forecast what would be the customers that is the total customer base for the next month and that's our objective. Now how do we do that? Uh, before we do that let's just plot a graph so I've plotted a, a normal uh, time series line chart here between the various months on the x-axis and the customer base on the y-axis and obviously as I mentioned here clearly I see a pattern and why is this needed before I go and apply the forecast function just to understand whether there is any definitive pattern in my data or not is there an increasing trend or not is is the data flat or not is it random is it erratic unless you don't find a pattern uh, you may not know which function to use in Excel and you may also not use it correctly. But the flip side to the whole problem is that uh, whenever you apply any formula, Excel is going to throw out some value or the other. So your forecasts could be completely wrong if you don't understand what is the underlying pattern in the data. And that's why it's important for you to do this. Now here clearly there is a increasing uh, pattern. And now we shall move on and talk about how do we apply the forecast function. Now as I mentioned earlier Excel has various forecast functions. Uh, the, the first one we want to try is what is called as forecast linear and then the next there is another forecast function called as forecast ETS and let's understand what that means uh, in a bit and of course later we will explore the other aspects as well. But let's get started now with the first item here which is the forecast linear and what does the linear mean it says that this data has a linear trend clearly for us that fits into our requirement we have a data in which both are increasing that is as the month is increasing we also have the custom base increasing so in such a scenario we can clearly apply this model which is called as the forecast linear and it's the simplest forecasting model and uh, logically also I'm going to predict you know even if I don't have this function I might predict the next value to be falling somewhere here right uh, somewhere around 1400 or so. The formula that I've used here which is what I have marked on the next column you apply forecast of dot linear and you would select the column. So now let's let's just do this to understand it a little better. So forecast and then I have to select my X. So the X in this case is going to be my month for which I wish to predict and this has to be a number and not uh, an, a something like a string like you know the date or the other factors. Then I have to give the known values of Y. What is the Y here? That's the customer base. So I'm giving all the previous values of Y and then it is asking me for the known values of X and that also I'm giving and now I'm going to close the bracket and as you see it's predicted the value so I've got the same value here as well so I'm able to predict what would be my November or rather the right word to use is forecast so I will be able to forecast what would be my 
November numbers. Now this is the basic model. Let's just check one more scenario. If you consider instead of the customer base, let's say I'm going to take uh, the uh, existing base. I'm sure a similar model would uh, be applicable there as well. Now will that model also apply for a new customer acquisition where the data doesn't seem to be uh, cumulative and doesn't seem to be increasing uh, month on month? We'll explore that. But take a step back and talk about how we got this number. How was Excel able to predict this number? Excel used a simple linear regression model which is y is a function of mx plus c where m represents the slope and c represents the constant and in order for us to know what the values for m and c are I could build a scatter diagram and uh, how do we do a scatter diagram you got to go to insert and here in insert you got to click on this and once you do that you will be able to create a scatter diagram like this of course you need to feed in the data of customer base in the y-axis and the month in the x-axis and uh, when you go to these uh, options here in the scatter diagram once you click on the scatter diagram it would show several options so let me just show this to you you would have quick layout and in that if you choose this one the ninth one in my version of excel it might be misplaced somewhere else in yours if you are using a later or earlier version than mine but uh, whatever that be you would still find this and this will give you what possibly would be the formula here right so that's the formula that I've got here which is 112.85x plus 270.2 so this is exactly the formula that I have taken here in this particular cell and I have uh, inserted that formula here and linked that to this November month and that's why you have that blue line just to show that how we got the value and this value you see is exactly same as the previous value when I round it off so the forecast function uh, would simplify your job of not really going and plotting a scatter diagram then creating the linear equation from that extracting the equation linking it to the formula so all that gets simplified and you just need to apply the formula and it can give you the value so this is the basis for how we got now uh, obviously in the next scenario which I mentioned earlier that is the new customer acquisition as you see in the data here it's not uh, quite linear you cannot conclude from this data that it's a linear trend uh, possibly it also looks like a decreasing trend if you had more data more historic data here I could say that it's a sawtooth kind of a shape which is dropping gently so I could say that it's a downward trend that I can see but given that we only have 10 months data and uh, you see that the data is going up and down here like this uh, surely this is not a linear pattern that would be the right model to predict it so uh, if I'm going to use the linear model here of course as I mentioned earlier Excel would give uh, the data but it may not be a good predictor now what else can I do how can I improve my prediction and that's what uh, takes us to the next topic of trying to apply seasonality to the data that is if there is a seasonal uh, pattern in the data that is you find that there is a cyclical pattern in the data that something repeats after um, every now and then and that's quite common in business data right even with other data like weather forecasts we find that you know seasons repeat after uh, you know one another in a definitive pattern similarly we have sales volumes peaking up in certain months dropping down back in certain months so most uh, phenomenon that we see has some kind of a pattern hidden pattern to it and uh, the simplest way in which you can extract that pattern is by applying this uh, formula in uh, Excel called as forecast dot ETS dot seasonality now what this formula does and what else can be done where are the limitations of that we'll spot, uh, talk about that with an example look at this case I've just uh, moved away a little bit from that data set but I'm still sticking on to the same company same scenario so uh, you have 11 months data here and uh, more than that actually I have somewhere around 15 months data and uh, I have data of customer churn so I'm collecting how many customers attracted who did not renew their subscription or something like that month on month and I have this data here when I plot this data you see that uh, it's a sawtooth data it's of course increasing and then you suddenly find there is a decreasing pattern now obviously for our eyes there seems to be a pattern that you know you see after every um, three data points one two and three then there is a decrease for another 
one or two data points then increases so some kind of a pattern is there uh, to confirm this you can use this functionality in excel which is called as forecast.ets where ets stands for uh, exponential smoothing technique uh, which will make sure that it takes the most recent data uh, it gives more weight or importance to the most recent data and excludes the data that's uh, pretty far off from our forecast. So if I want to forecast for a given month, then it would exclude uh, the, the importance that it gives for something that's farther off. Now coming back, let's not put into the statistical techniques. Now you understood what is seasonality. So how do you apply this formula? The formula is given here. Let me apply that for you. So I would say forecast dot ets seasonality and uh, it's asking me for the values so i'm going to give these values here and uh, then it's asking me for the timeline so corresponding timeline values i need to give and make sure that these two are of the same uh, length the, uh, these two uh, arrays are the same length and then there are two optional uh, fields one is date completion another is called as aggregation date completion uh, sorry data completion and aggregation data completion is when you have an empty cell let's say i didn't have the churn value for august and uh, what do you want excel to do uh, one is excel can leave it as uh, empty or it can treat it as zero or it can actually take the average of two values which are just above and below it and then uh, fill that value there so what method you want to use so that uh, is what you need to specify with uh, one zero etc and the other is uh, aggregation so what does aggregation mean in in case that uh, we have duplicate data let's say for august we have two data points right for some reason you know i have collected two sets of data some in some cases you know it's possible that we have uh, let's say i'm having regional data and i have four regions and i have uh, month on month data for four regions and I've all put that together in the same uh, sheet in the same same table and that kind of a scenario aggregation will assume whether you want to take the average or whether you want to take the sum of them etc so uh, as of now that's not very uh, critical for us I'm going to exclude that so close the bracket and uh, we are done with it I've used double brackets here so that could be a problem so yeah so now i get the seasonality value so what does three mean it means that after every three data points there is a repetitive pattern that's appearing in my data so that's the purpose of identifying this three but uh, where will i use it uh, that's what we're going to do next so uh, the next scenario is to build a forecasting model using the smoothening techniques that i talked about building uh, into the seasonality element uh, which is there in the data and uh, in, in this case, we'll use a formula which is forecast.ets and then we would use the values as I see here. So let me do that for you. So I'm going to predict, let's say for the month of uh, April. So I'll say forecast ETS and then what's my target date? Uh, that would be, let's say April, so which is uh, 16. Remember that you should not key that in as uh, after 12 you should not again start with one just remember to keep that as a running number and the next is the uh, timeline and uh, so um, sorry the next is the value so I'm going to key in all these values here and the next would be the timeline and then the next would be the seasonality value which is this so I can key that in as three here and then close the packet and I'm getting a forecast here which is negative number right and you see in this data uh, it's not quite awkward to get a negative number because the churn has been hovering somewhere here up and down and it started dipping from here onwards and you see that it's come down here pretty much uh, to a sub uh, two level so it's come to somewhere around one so it's not very unlikely that it would drop down to a value which is below zero and for a business that's desirable because you don't have any customer attrition on, uh, on uh, you don't forecast any customer attrition for that month so that's how you draw the forecast now I've done the linear forecast here you see the linear forecast here in this case is predicting it to be five and uh, it's not a right indicator because it's not taken the seasonality into consideration but here yes month on month you see that the data is fluctuating a lot which is not the case here it's almost uh, giving almost similar predictions but here you see that it's 
kind of uh, you know for the month of Ma uh, May which is the next month if I'm just going to exclude that data for the next month then uh, here I've keyed in a value this value but I've kept it white so that you don't get confused now similarly here for May and June I will be able to draw predictions for the same formula as well so this way I will be able to forecast what my values are which is what in fact in this graph you see them in this uh, blue here now uh, this dotted line I'll come to that a bit now the next thing we can do with this is to create a, a confidence band so we create a limit an upper limit and lower limit because you're forecasting and let's say you go to your manager and tell him that my forecast for next month is that we wouldn't have any customer attrition and the next question he's going to ask us how sure are you right so usually that's the question that follows any forecasting data etc right so uh, it's better to answer that as well with data and so for that we can create what's called as a confidence bands here and how do we do that we use this function in forecast uh, sorry in excel called as forecast.ets. Uh, confidence so you write that in short form as c-o-n-f-i-n-t right and let's do that forecast here what does this give you it gives you the range or it gives you one side of the range so the target value is um, target date is here the values are all here and uh, the time it's almost the same as what we did the timeline is here and I want to give the confidence here so I'm going to give 0.95 which means I'm going to give 95 percent confidence and I'm sure if you have been uh, using statistics a little bit you must have heard of this 95 percent confidence quite often before so I'm using 95 percent confidence if you have doubts in these concepts etc you can always visit our courses uh, in our uh, website and you will be able to understand some of the basic concepts of statistics when you go through our courses on uh, analytics on uh, lean six sigma green belt black belt etc okay now coming back seasonality i'm going to key in as three because we know that and uh, the last two columns are optional so i'm going to ignore that and i'm going to say okay so now i get this here so I've got a band here so what does this band mean it means that this forecast can be um, on either side deviated by 5.3 so I have to create a lower limit and an upper limit so which is a simple formula so I'm going to take the forecast value of uh, minus 0.12 and uh, to that I'm going to add 5.3 and I'm going to subtract 5.3 to get these two values so on one side I'm having a negative 5.4 and the other side I have a positive 5.17 and similarly for the others as well and as you see this value would uh, change a little bit and it would change depending on the forecasts right so it goes like this and I will be able to get a graph like this where I will be able to clearly say uh, within which band so this band means that 95% of the times you forecast that your value future value should fall within this band even if it is not exactly same on the blue line for next month uh, there is a very good possibility that is 95 percent chance that it would fall within the gray bands so that's the advantage of using a, a forecasting model with confidence levels here okay so now you're in for a small surprise uh, if I want to do all this right without much of hassle and I want to do it in two minutes as I walk across to my manager's uh, desk with my laptop in my hand and I as I walk I want to create a forecasting model uh, then that can be done as well so I'm going to show you how to do that so select here these cells here and you go to data and uh, in data you have this thing called as forecast sheet and you would find this in the later versions of Excel the earlier versions may not have them so click on this and you see I've exactly got uh, very similar to what I've created below here and this has an option for you to change the confidence level you want uh, you can also have other things like the time range and all that if you want to change all that stuff right so you can change all of that as well you can also include what is called as forecast uh, statistics and uh, in a new sheet a new sheet will get appended and in that this chart which includes the forecast would get plotted uh, very similar to what we created ourselves here right and that's uh, a great advantage for you because you can do it in no time in addition to this it would also give you these values 
of course from which this graph has been plotted and it also gives you some statistics here i'm not going to talk about them right now but that's for another video so friends so you can use this forecast function in excel to do a lot of wonder especially if you're a manager quite often you are challenged uh, every year every quarter to tell what could be the forecast for the next month and usually we do a estimate by calling all our colleagues our subordinates and asking them to give a forecast and then accumulate that and submit to the manager why don't you use a more scientifically sound method to forecast such as the one that you see here and uh, as I also mentioned earlier, there are limitations of this model. This is not an advanced model. If your data has more complexities in it, yes, that can also be used uh, to forecast if you use a more complex model. But this is, I think, more than enough for most of you if you wish to do forecasting for your business related data. So with that, friends, looking forward to seeing you again in the next video. Thank you.